Hello everyone, welcome back to Fanblade. Uh, it is pickup making day. I've got to make a custom pickup for the electric upright base. Uh, some commenters uh, very uh, correctly pointed out that when you have an extreme radius like this, what you can do uh, is simply mount a split coil pickup at a weird angle like that and uh, everything should line up. It would work perfectly. It would probably sound you know just like a p bass or in, in the case of my one a fretless p bass nothing wrong with that love that sound but i reckon this looks a bit odd i don't i don't particularly like it aesthetically um also it's a full moon and i've gone a little bit mad and designed something crazy these are sewing machine bobbins and they are pretty much just about the right size for what i'm trying to do essentially four separate coils on four strings arranged in however tight of a radius I want, which in this case is, you know, actually relatively tight. Um, they have a 6mm hole in the centre, and I have got some 6mm bolts there. These are cap screws, of course they've got quite a large head on them. This is an advantage, because the only magnets that I've got are neodymiums, and they're quite big. If I were to just use a slug of metal, 6mm steel, just through the centre there, with the magnet pressed right up hard there, then what I would get is the coil that I'm going to wind around uh, around this bobbin would simply get swamped in the magnetic field from this magnet. Um, and whatever the string's doing on this other side, it would have less of an effect because there's just so much force coming from uh, this magnet. But having it stood off a little bit by the cap of the screw, uh, that's actually you know, going to you know, help the coil read the string. In fact, to give it even more of a chance, I've just cut some little spaces uh, so that the, uh, the tip of the screw is just pointing out, poking out the other side of the bobbin, and uh, the magnet is, of course, kept well away. So the magnetism is flowing through, it's coming out this side, the string is going to do things to it, and then the coil can... Uh, read that disturbance in the magnetic field without getting swamped by the original source of the magnetism on that side. So uh, this is probably going to work quite well. All I've got to do is make it. I haven't quite worked out what I'm doing for a housing yet. Knowing me, I'm just going to make it out of wood. The aesthetic that I'm going for is kind of uh, curved soap bar kind of kind of a design. Like I don't have to make any flat work, it's all here. Um, I can pretty much jump straight to winding these. Right, that is four bobbins. Two of them are going clockwise and two of them of course are going counterclockwise. This is for humbucking. The terminals on the top uh, that I've soldered everything to, um, if you want to know more information about them I've told you the full story in my previous pickup winding video. There is a link up in the corner of the screen up there. So the big question I have right now is what are these reading? because even though they're 5,000 reps each, 
that doesn't actually mean a heck of a lot because they're so small the amount of copper that's in there it's not going to give us a very high reading 5000 reps on a pickup like this is going to be infinitely well i say infinitely no it's going to be about four times more than 5000 reps on one of these so um, there's just more copper in that winding so let's measure these and see what we've got it's 1.06 that's a little on the light side 1.07 again a little bit well it's about the same but um, i would have expected these to be somewhere in the region of two each but no 1.07 ish and again about 1.07 so that's fine they're all reading about the same now i am debating whether or not i ought to glue the pole pieces in now i think i will actually because i need to have the full measurement of what i'm dealing with so that i can actually make the housing to make sure it all fits that is the bulk of the housing made i've had to raise the sides a little bit to account for the fact that the top's coming around on a curve uh, i'll just very carefully sand those flush now the part that i've been grappling with is how do i make a curved top um, i have traditionally been very bad at bending wood steam bending heat bending it just never seems to work for me so i'm, I'm kind of hesitant to give it a go now uh, i don't really have two days to waste on experiments so my other thought was that i could just take a solid block this is actually an off cut from the neck uh, and try and cut a one millimeter thick slice in a curve that seems like a very fiddly exercise to me. I don't know if that's going to work very well either. I suspect when we get down into the end grain, it'll just break. Uh, that'll be no good at all. Then I remembered that a long time ago, way back in the distant past, I got some formica. Please don't ask why it's cut to the shape of the back of a Rickenbacker. It's a very long story. Um, suffice it to say, this is very bendy. It's very, very thin, and it'll uh, a lovely little piece of this will just go straight over the top of the air it should epoxy on no problem at all gluing these down inside is going to be a little bit of a mission because i do need to actually wire them together before i put them in there and i've got to be very precise about where they're actually located because the pole pieces aren't actually all that large and although i do, I do have the string positions marked on this uh, this uh, diagram getting them onto the formica in a way that i'm going to actually be able to see what i'm doing as i'm gluing them in yeah it's just going to be a little bit fiddly but then a lot of things about this process are quite fiddly anyway i'm getting used to it
that is the housing made, all of the wiring is done. I've just measured this and that came to 4.6k. Is it 4.6 or 4.2? It's 4.2k, my apologies. Um, there is a bug in my multimeter. Get off. I'm going to set them in resin in two halves. I'm going to do a basic set for all of the coils. Then, uh, once they are solidly locked down in place, that's when I'm going to put the magnets in. Because as these are going to be sitting in there, sort of bent towards, the magnets are going to pull each other, they're going to pull each other off whatever glue I've stuck in there. It's just going to be an absolute nightmare to get them to stay put. So, I'm going to set them in resin first, then stick the magnets on. And this does actually give me the chance to test out uh, my neodymium magnets versus ceramic magnets theory. that a couple of minutes then let the uh, let the air back in and then we'll pull another vacuum on it and uh, just to get the rest of the air bubbles out and that should pretty much be it for the night I can leave it 24 hours to set solid then I can put some magnets on it and do the same thing again and here we are it's the next day I've wired up an output jack and I want to try a little test I have got one ceramic magnet and one neodymium magnet. I'm going to pop one ceramic magnet on there. I'm going to go to the base. I'm literally going to hold this over the string and just pluck the open string, uh, maybe try a few hammer-ons, and just see how it sounds. Then swap it out for the neodymium and do exactly the same thing and see what sort of a difference it makes. I am predicting that the neodymium will be louder. I'm not predicting a whole lot of difference in tone. Uh, that is presuming that this pickup has anything that you would consider tone. It is as yet untested, so let's test it. So I've gone back and had a listen to that recording in fairly minute detail. Um, there's a lot more volume coming off the Neos. The tonal differences though, like it's negligible. If you were to tell me they were both the same, I'd probably believe you. They sound very, very similar. Um, and these have more output, so Neos win. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the polarities right. Because two of them go up one way, and two of them go up the other way. And I've got to be careful that they don't grab each other, so then I flip those two over. See what I mean? Those two, it's slipped off there. Um, <laughs> we've got a ceramic stuck to it. Magnets are tricky to work with sometimes. Hmm, we may have a problem. Uh, I can try chucking a spacer between them. This entire thing's about to get drenched in... Uh, drenched in resin anyway there's a little piece of here's a little piece of wood I'll cut a little uh, I'll cut a little piece and uh, we'll stick it in there so after quite a bit of stuffing around <laughs> I now have four magnets sitting where I want them more or less that's as good as it's going to get let's pour the second lot of epoxy and just fill it all up and I've got to be careful with it because I don't entirely trust these two outer ones not to slide in um, I really hope that doesn't happen mm -hmm. 
I don't actually have to vacuum this because I'm not trying to get any epoxy into the windings, but uh, I just love running my vacuum pump. And that is now ready to sit there for another 24 hours. And then we can finally get on with cleaning it up and putting it on the base. So this is the pickup. Another 24 hours later, the epoxy is fully hardened. That's nice and solid. Uh, the whole thing's ready for its final sanding and finishing. Uh, I had planned to ebonize this to make it match the fingerboard. Uh, unfortunately, I can't ebonize the top of it because that's for mica. <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, so I have a sharpie. I'm just going to color it in black. The other thing I'm going to do is actually mask off a little area here uh, for my logo. I've done a couple of tests on this and it worked rather well. And there is a fully completed, fully finished pickup. In theory, getting the whole pickup centered on the body should be just be a matter of centering the thing and having everything line up. But uh, I just want a little insurance policy to make sure that the pole pieces are in the right places. So, using a little piece of steel, this finds where the pole pieces are. It sort of will jump to where they are, and then I'm just marking that position with a little bit of tape just so that I can mark on the body where the strings are and I can line these up so that uh, everything's going to work. It's all going to work, trust me. Now, regrettably, I have to take the entire thing apart again. The pickup is far too tall to just slide under the strings uh, and of course I've got to cut a cavity for it. Uh, I'm also going to put a small cavity in the side, going to have a volume knob and an output jack. That's it, no tone knob. Um, I can't think of a situation where I would want less treble and if I do then I've just adjusted on the amp. Just keeping it absolutely simple. Grounding the strings is going to be a little bit interesting because of course uh, I had intended a big plate across those, 
Uh, yeah, I'll just have to figure out a way to run a wire to loop it through all four of them. But apart from that, it should be fairly straightforward, uh, except I've got to take the entire thing apart. Uh, and if I'm completely honest, I think I'll just uh, speed the process up a little bit. All right, it's woodwork time. Okay, so this is kind of neat. I've just got to explain what's happening here. I had major problems finishing this piece of wood. None of the CA glue that I used wanted to stick to it, so I actually wound up uh, finishing it with the same liquid gloss resin that you've just seen me put in here. Uh, and I don't know what it is with this particular piece of wood. Nothing wants to stick to it. <laughs> I can peel the liquid gloss off, if I'm very careful in that corner. <laughs> this is the finish just peeling off. Good grief. How thick is a layer of liquid gloss? I'm getting 0.2 of a millimetre thick. <laughs> That's really interesting. And there's a pickup cavity. Obviously I've lifted a bit of the finish off the sides, that's not great, but I can wick a little bit of CA glue in under there, sort of tap it down and hopefully it'll spread out and just fill up all of that and uh, make it invisible. That's the plan at least. <laughs> right, control cavity. Going in the edge, I've got a dirty great big Forstner bit, uh, and I'm just going to plow in there. Okay, so here is where we're at. The cavities are done, the ground wire is installed. I thought that was going to be difficult. It was actually a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So that's good. Uh, pickups ready to go in. I have taken the bridge and the nut and I have sanded them out a bit. These are ready for a couple of coats of finish. I did debate whether or not to ebonize the nut to make it blend in with the fingerboard but by the time I put some finish on there, it's going to blend in with the headstock anyway. I'm fine with that. Uh, I want to protect the oak bridge, so that'll get a couple of coats. The cover for my mess of a control cavity, of course, tortoise shell. Yeah, we're basically ready to go. Fan blade instruments. 
I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. Coming to a t-shirt near you. It's together, it's the moment of truth. Let's take it to the studio and see how she goes. And so there you have it. It is an electric upright bass. Which is kind of good because that's what I was actually trying to make. <laughs> it sounds like an electric bass guitar. But for my purposes of uh, learning to play this style and uh, uh, getting better at technique and getting better at intonation. Because there's no, there's no dot markers on this. Um, what you just heard was played entirely by ear. <laughs> you can probably tell. I need to work on a lot of stuff and that's what this instrument's going to let me do. Um, also, my covers band is talking about learning some sting songs, so... Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this thing. I'm really, uh, really, really glad to uh, have the thing and actually have it work, because it's, you know... Uh, it's going, to, it's going to see some hours being played, I'm sure. But I am going to make a case for this, and, and the stand as well. I need to uh, build a box that'll, that'll house this and keep it safe, because, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still dubious about this headstock. One hit on there, and that whole thing is just going to shatter. I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel safe about moving it around too much, but uh, uh, when I get a case for it, uh, then... Uh, yeah, it'll all be good. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you again to everybody for your amazing comments, uh, your helpful suggestions, and just general encouragement. It really helps keep me motivated and teaches me a lot, and, and I couldn't be more grateful to you all for that. So thank you again for getting involved. And with that said, uh, yes, I will see you later. Cheers. Bye.